Hello and welcome guys, my name is Bastian Passion and today we're going to look into reactive forms. We're going to create a reusable input component and add some error logging to it. Alright, let's jump into it. The first thing we want to do is to, tr to create a component. So let's create a component called input. So an input component. Once that's done, let's jump into the input component. So there's a couple of things we need to do here. We want to add some inputs. First thing I would recommend to add is something called input ID, which would be of type string. Second thing would be to add a control, which essentially would be the form control. Third uh, thing and last thing for now would be to add the label. So this one would be, for instance, if you have a label and you want to have a text, you can add it into the component immediately. All right, so we can just copy this selector for now on. We can copy it and paste it into the app component per this example. All right, so input works. We know that this component now works. Uh, it needs some styling, so we can add some styling here. So let's create a clause called form control. Within it, let's create a label and let's create an input field. All right, so as we did create, we created something called input ID. Uh, the reason to why we want the input ID is because whenever you press the label, you want it to automatically focus on the input field. So this is just a simplification of this. All right, and here we want to paste the label that we actually pass in in this manner. So now we are having the input, we have the label, and now we also need to use the form control. So this would be, as we named it, to be control. So the reason to why it's red is that we need to jump into the app module and we need to import reactive forms module from Angular forms. All right, once this is done, it should appear an input field with no label and nothing else since we haven't passed anything yet. So let's create our first form groups. Let's call it form group. Uh, we create a form group which will contain a three different things first name last name and email so let's create a new form control first name so this would be the initial value and then we can have some validators which would be an array or simply just a validator so let's create an array uh, so this means that we're going to have a first name which requires which is required to be set to anything all right, so first name, last name, and then we would have the email. The email we can have both required. We can also add validators email, for instance. Also, this is something that's already built in into the validators, which simplifies a lot. So once we save this, we have our first form group consisting of three form controls. So first name, last name, and email. So we're going to essentially add this into the HTML. So the first one input as you remember we had the control as an input so here we are going to pass in the controls in this way uh, we are also going to let's see here this so first name and then we have the input id which is going to be first name and then lastly we have the label which is going to be first name in this way all right, so we can just copy this and paste it two more times. Last name, and we can just say email in this way, as easy as that. <clears throat> I will have three input fields, all right? Cool, let's go back into the TS file. We can just make sure that we have some subscription set up properly. So we can do this, the form group, the value changes, subscribe, this will essentially just um, subscribe to all of the changes done in the form. So if you change first name, it will automatically come here and it will log the value or all of the values really of the form group. So if we would just simply write hello, you'll see <clears throat> all of the values. All right. So in this sense, we, we have something set up and we know for a fact that it's subscriptions and so on are um, it's working as, as expected. <clears throat> so instead of console logging this value, let's go ahead and console log these dot from group. So 
what this will do is essentially so if I would write hello you would see that the first name um, field is valid meanwhile the last name field is invalid since we haven't added anything and we had set the validators to be required so as we can see here we have uh, the errors which is essentially an object with the name and this name here required is whatever is matched here so required and then you have the colon true which means that we have an error so if we wouldn't have any errors then it wouldn't appear here it would be empty so in this way we can in fact add more validations to the input component which means we can essentially print all of the error messages related to this error fields which means we have something reusable so if we jump into the input uh, input html file here sorry guys <laughs> If we jump into the input component HTML file, we can see we have the label, we have the input as seen, but let's also go ahead and add like a loop that will print all of the errors that we have. All right. So let error of control dot errors and we need to have key value. As you might uh, remember, it was an object. We do not know exactly what will be printed since this is going to be standardized. We want to do this. So for now, let's just go ahead and and just print the value so it would be true in this case so you see this one doesn't have anything error for this is true and so on but what we can do now to generalize this is to create just uh, some key value error messages in this way so we say it will be a record of string and it, its value will be string so we can say required and then we can add the the field is required and then we would have for the email the email is invalid all right so now we have two error messages here which are standardized and as you know we can just access it by essentially accessing the key so that's why we added the keys here required and email are the keys and um, yeah and as you know the email has two different fields so it needs to be required it also needs to be valid so if we would try to go with like this it will say the email is invalid and if we remove everything it will say the field is required all right so this means we have added some error messaging and as you can see in this in this way we'll also print it but if you reload the page you'll see that they're shown as a default this is kind of a bad pattern right so what we would like to do in this case is we would like to just hide it let's add a container since it won't add any extra element to it let's do this there sorry guys i have some fat fingers but all right so let's do it ng if and we want to say hey if if the control is invalid show this but it will initially be invalid since it doesn't have any value so we need to also make sure that user has actually touched the field and changed something within the field so we can say if it's dirty meaning that you have written something in it and it's touched touch means essentially that you click within and you click outside so it would be a blur effect all right so we have invalid dirty and touched right so this is exactly the same we want to have in order for us to add some some sort of a class to the input field so if you would say the invalid then we would have the same thing and now when we reload the page you will see that there's nothing shown initially but if i would write something and remove it it would appear so if i would blur from here it would appear here all right so if i would just go to the last name and do nothing it will not prompt any error messages since i haven't written anything all right so what what remains to be done now uh, essentially maybe you want to have some uh, some uh, some errors for for this field so i have some pre-filled css essentially just setting a red color here and also on the invalid class it adds a red border instead of having it as gray and in this way you can generalize uh, and reuse all of the input components they have in a way that's very easy it's easy to test them separately and so on 
All right, that's that's it for me, guys, on reactive forms and reusable input components. Thanks for watching.